This video is sponsored by Action VFX. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another amazing tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to turn this forest into a burning forest just like this. Like the other day, I was trying to do the real thing because obviously you want to film the real thing, but like the neighborhood here didn't really allow me to do that. They didn't really think that was a good idea or a responsible idea. So then I didn't see another choice to do it with visual effects. So in today's video, I will show you how to turn this amazing forest scene into a burning forest, uh, which you can use for a ton of awesome things like music videos or like documentaries. So right here we are in Adobe After Effects and you can see that this is the footage that I will be working with. So this is footage from Artgrid uh, just because I like the quality over there. Uh, but you can go and find your own forest fo footage or just record something. It's moving a little bit, you can make it move more. Uh, but the more you move in your shot, the more you will need to do tracking, which is just a time consuming thing. But apart from that, it's all right. So. I will drag this into a new composition right here. I can close this here so we only focus on the final thing here. We can see that uh, I also have a folder right here with Action VFX, and that actually brings us to today's video sponsor. Action VFX has amazing stock footage for visual effects, uh, and you can see that they're concentrating themselves on fire, explosions, and everything that is kind of related to action visual effects, as the name says. Who would have thought? <laughs> I know these guys for a long time, we go way back, and I use their products a ton of times because they are all filmed with a Hollywood standard camera, and their assets are actually being used in official series on Netflix and on feature films, which is kind of crazy if you think about it, uh, because that means that the quality is good enough to put in a movie. Anyway, if you would like to know more about Action VFX, I will drop a link in the description below where you can go and check out their website and see their amazing stuff. And let's go back to our tutorial. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and these are the assets that I thought I wanted to be using for my scene here. So we have some fire, we have some smaller fire that are is actually growing, burning the breeze, which is great for the ground fire here. You don't need to end up using all of these, uh, but I just wanted to give you uh, some examples here so you can actually see what we will be working with. And I also downloaded some fog from their website because that's what we're going to be using in the background. As you have fire, uh, you will also have smoke and your forest will be very, well, it won't be as visible as it was before. So we kind of have to add some atmosphere there, some smoke to really damp up the entire uh, forest and to make the fire also more visible and look a little bit better. So what we will do here is we will click on our footage and go over here to the tracker and click track camera. Let it do its thing or you can go into the advanced step and check detailed analysis that will just add a little bit more detail in your tracking data. It will take a little bit longer, but will get you further. There we go, we can see a ton of points. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna assign a fire element to a specific location at these points. So the fire is actually in that depth of the scene. So that's one way to do it. Another way would be to track it with Mocha AE or a 2D tracker where you will need to track each object where you want the fire to be at and then it will be in that position as well. So these are two options you can use. Uh, so whatever floats your boat. So now once I tracked it, I actually wanna do a few more things. I wanna duplicate my footage by going to edit and duplicate it. Then I'm also going to delete the tracking data. We don't need it for now. And we will go to the beginning of our timeline. You can see right here, we have one tree, a second tree and a third tree that are actually quite much in the foreground. So we wanna kind of uh, mask these out so we can add atmosphere behind it. Because as you know, if you're going to be looking in real life and you have some fog, the trees are actually going to be in the middle of it and the fog will be appearing behind it. And that's actually a 3D depth, a 3D space, but we don't have that here. So we have to fake it by masking out the foreground elements and putting them back on top. So this we're going to be renaming to trees and we wanna open up Mocha AE. It's actually an integrated tracking tool and rotoscoping tool in Adobe After Effects. So everyone should have this one. Now it's open and make sure that you're at the beginning of your timeline here. And we're going to click on the X-Spline tool, zoom in here and try to mask out the tree as close as possible. And 
And once you're done actually tracking something, you can right click to uh, finalize that mask. And then we can also, well, actually not tracking masking. And we can um, also adjust them afterwards. So wherever you see like a gap, uh, you could move that and trim it a little bit better. Uh, so that's completely up to you. Zoom in here and check the details. So we have three trees and we can track this forward. So then we go and check if it tracked well. And wherever you see it going off track, you will go in here and adjust it where needed. Okay, so once you're satisfied with the result, you can close that and we can now go into the mat and create masks. If we're going to solo this layer, we can see that we now only have the threes. We can also go and press F on the keyboard. We can actually press M twice. Um, there we go. And now we see the mask expansion. So play with the feather. You can select all of these and then zoom in and play a little bit with the feather and play a little bit with the expansion to see just that three. And we can, of course, go and edit that later. Also, we're going to unsolo that right now. And we're also going to click here and we're going to kind of mask our foreground a little bit and also this plant. So we're going to mask the ground. We can also press M on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch and look into everything and make sure that it's in the right spot at all times. So you can also go and track this if you want to, but I don't feel that this is necessary for this look. Okay, so now one more and that's for the close forest here and that's for the close bush over here and there we go and this one I'm definitely going to be uh, feathering quite a bit so now we have a real 3d depth in our scene and if we're going to bring in things like our smoke we can see that it's actually in 3D space of our scene. And of course, the better we would do uh, this job, the better it will look. Because if we look at the tiny details around the trees, we will still see some little uh, faults, like little issues here, uh, which we can then trim by going to press M twice on the keyboard and then playing with this. But right now we see the mask, so we can't concentrate on that line. So what we will do is click here, and now we can concentrate on that line and then play with the expansion until you think that looks all right. There we go. And then of course, for this case, we're going to set the smoke to a screen. So obviously this looks way, way too bright. And what we also wanna do is click on our original footage and go to effects, color correction, exposure, and bring the exposure quite down. We can also copy this exposure and paste it on our top layer. But here we're going to make it a little bit brighter. I'm going to bring in a color correction tint and I'm going to change my colors here. The blacks to a very dark orange. And the white to also a kind of more saturated orange. And that's looking all right. So now we have um, our smoke in there and our smoke is a lot more visible in this case. So we can copy our tint and paste that on our foreground elements also. Uh, but here it's a little bit brighter as you can see and you can play with that as well. So maybe you want it brighter, but maybe you want it more saturated. Uh, well, orange as well or more like towards the reds. Uh, you can really play with, with these settings uh, until you think that looks all right. So for the smoke, I'm obviously going to move it a little bit. Also maybe bring it up a little bit. So there we go. We can even go ahead and mask out the bottom a little bit. Better it. Okay. And again, effects, color correction, tint. And we're going to introduce orange in here as well from the fire reflection or luminance. Okay, so now it's time to start playing with fire. And as you might remember, in the beginning of this tutorial, we tracked our camera here. So what we wanna do 
is go to the effects controls, select the camera tracker, and on the points that you wanna add fire, like right here, we wanna right click, create a null in camera. And then we can rename this to foreground left, for example. And then we can find fire that we think is a good fit for foreground left. And we're just going to bring it in here. At first, we're just going to turn this into a 3D camera, a 3D layer and offset it so we can actually see the fire. And then I'm going to press P on the keyboard for the null here, click on the value, hold control and press C on the keyboard. And if you're going to click on your 3D layer, control V to paste it, you will see that it will paste to that location. Now we can bring it up a little bit, something like that. And that's looking all right. So another thing that I like to do because we are working with a dark scene is I want to add a um, background here because you can see that the fire is transparent. So I'm going to add a solid composite effect here and I'm going to turn this black. That way we can also add glow elements to this. So if we're going to add a perfect glow, which you can download on our website for free, uh, you can now add a lot more um, luminance to the fire. It looks a little bit better, a little bit more cinematic. Okay, so then change the blending mode to a screen and there we have our fire integrated into our background. So make sure that your project settings right here are at 32 bits per channel. That's going to give the best colors for fire blending modes and uh, with glows. You can also go and play with linear workspaces. But that's not always necessary in my opinion. And you can also go and use the color correction curves in this case to really design the fire however you like it. So maybe you want a little bit more red, uh, a little bit less, uh, like a little bit more orangey. And then with the green, you can play with the S curve here to add contrast in these colors and make them individually pop. Okay, so that's looking already pretty cool. And now it's just up to you to building it up and making it look great. Another cool thing to add is fire embers. And that's what we have right here. So we can bring that into our scene as well. Also make this a 3D layer and make it quite big. Also offset it to make sure that we already have spawned particles. And I'm also going to flip it because it's actually coming from the other side. So flip horizontal, that way it's coming from the left. We can also add motion blur to it, uh, which I'm going to be using a third party a plugin for RSMB, uh, but it's really powerful. We can also add an exposure tag and increase the exposure of the embers to make it more visible. And again, we can also apply all the effects that we used. So control A, control C and paste it to the embers here and make it a screen and just play with the intensity. And now, of course, the more you're going to build upon the scene, the better it will look and the more complicated it will look. What you can also do is just use elements that you already used, like this one in uh, the foreground here. And we're duplicating it and just putting it on a different location in your scene, but offsetting it, maybe even scaling it down to something like 70%. Offset it quite a bit so it looks quite different and now put it like over here. Maybe even use a flip and style it towards however you want. And there we go. So that's how you create an awesome fire forest in Adobe After Effects. If your tracks don't match exactly just yet, you can play with different techniques such as mocha tracking. So that's 2D tracking, which I also have tutorials for, uh, which I will try and link in the description. And if you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give this video a like. It would be much appreciated. Also subscribe to the channel for more and definitely hit the notification bell so you stay notified when we upload new videos. Apart from that, I hope to see you guys and girls girls in the next one and until next time create epic videos by the way have you seen my previous video it's also pretty cool and i'm sure you're going to learn a thing or two so definitely go and check that one out and i'll see you in the next one peace